How's it going, everybody? Today's video is going to be about um, five different studies and research that prove that ME is a biological illness. It's not psychiatric. Um, that is something a lot of people had have had to deal with at doctors or assumptions from coworkers and family. So the video is intended for someone who uh, might have a family member or coworker who isn't quite understanding or believing uh, that ME is as severe as it is and, and that it has actual uh, biomarkers, right? So um, share this with them. Hopefully this helps with anyone in your family or your circle um, where you're having a little bit of doubt, maybe having some trouble articulating um, some of this data. So I'm going to do my best to share this data. Um, some of it is, is long and, and detailed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the links in the description, go at your own pace, but I encourage you to read all of them. Um, I'm also going to eventually set up chapters in the video because I think this video is going to be on the longer side. So when you show it to people or you share it, they can kind of just skip to whatever they, they want to see or hear um, and don't have to listen to me babble on about some of the details. But for those who, who do want to hear a little bit more, um, I'm going to jump right in. And the first uh, thing I'm going to share here is uh, it's a study from the NIH. Um, and the headline reads, NIH study offers new clues into the causes of post-infectious ME-CFS. It's an in-depth study uh, that finds brain, immune, and metabolic abnormalities linked to debilitating chronic disease. So one of the things that I highlighted here, um, and again, I, I encourage people to take a deeper dive here, um, but I'm just going to kind of read a few sentences um, they also analyzed spinal fluid collected from participants and found abnormally low levels of catecholamines, so I'm pronouncing that correctly, and other molecules that help regulate the nervous system in people with ME-CFS compared to healthy controls. Um, immune testing revealed that ME-CFS groups had higher levels of naive B cells and lower levels of switched memory B cells, cells that help the immune system fight off pathogens in blood compared to healthy controls. So there are differences in B cells and in other molecules that help regulate the nervous system uh, in comparison to uh, healthy controls. So right off the bat, um, some of uh, you know some of the better data that medicine has to offer um, in this in this space um, is is proving that this is more than just something someone's, you know, imagining or feeling or making up, right? So the next uh, thing here is from MEpedia, and it goes into um, two-day cardiopulmonary exercise testing. And I, again, I encourage you to read a little bit more about what that is. Um, I did an interview with Dr. Snell, very nice guy, who helped develop this test. Um, I'll put that up here somewhere, um, and you can kind of take a deeper dive into that. But essentially, um, people are connected to oxygen and different uh, levels of, um, I'm sorry, different um, machines that can uh, measure different vitals and oxygen, and you do a test two days in a row, an exercise test. You're either on a sta stationary bike or uh, running on a treadmill depending on what you're able to do. Um, and during the exercise test on the second day, ME-CFS patients showed much lower oxygen consumption and workload at peak exercise and uh, aerobic thresholds. So again, the, you, can't really, uh, you can't really fake uh, this type of test. They can, they can see if you are, right, by measuring your, your output and your energy and your oxygen and your heart rate and all these different things that they're measuring. And, you know, in the cliff notes are, in general, people with ME and CFS, one of the hallmark symptoms is post-exertional malaise. Um, and for people who don't know what that is, it's when people with ME and CFS overexert themselves, and then it causes a flare-up of, of symptoms. That's basically the simplified version. And this test actually can, to a degree, measure that. They see the drop-off in physical performance on the second day. Where someone healthy, they, they work out one day, and then it's they work out the next day, and it's almost the same output. Whereas people with ME and CFS, there's a very big drop-off. 
uh, and oxygen and, and it goes into much you know deeper detail than that um, but they have consistently found um, a, a pretty big drop-off of people with ME and CFS uh, in comparison to other chronic and debilitating illnesses. Uh, the next thing I have here is from uh, publichealth.columbia.edu and the headline reads scientists discover robust evidence that chronic fatigue syndrome or ME is a biological illness immune signatures and blood point to distinct disease stages and it opens doors to better diagnosis and treatment. One of the things that I highlighted here is these immune signatures represent the first robust physical evidence that ME-CFS is a biological illness as opposed to a psychological disorder and the first evidence that the disease has distinct stages. And this was published in February of 2015. So the evidence has been out there for a while um, and sometimes you know, people who don't understand certain illnesses and things like that, the data takes a long time to get to everyone. Um, but the data is out there, and I'm hoping that this video helps share some of that data for someone, you know, like I said in the beginning of the video, who, who may be doubting um, that you're going through a, a biological uh, debilitating illness. The next thing I have here is uh, from the NIH as well. Um, the headline reads, Brainstem Abnormalities in ME, uh, a Scoping Review and Evaluation of MRI Findings. And what I highlighted here was data showed that MRI studies frequently reported structural changes in the white and gray matter, abnormalities of functional connectivity within the brainstem and with other brain regions have also been found. So now this is another data point, right? Uh, an MRI has now, um, they've found in MRIs that there are abnormalities in the brain. Um, so that's, so that's um, you know, they've found things in the blood. Um, they have measured your exercise and your oxygen. Uh, now there's, there's uh, white and gray matter and abnormalities of the brain that have been found in images. Uh, the next thing here is uh, advanced science, um, and it reads, Developing a blood cell-based diagnostic test for ME uh, using peripheral blood mononuclear cells. And uh, if you take a deeper dive into this, it's, it's interesting. They're trying to, to develop uh, a diagnostic test for ME um, so people can, you know, if they have symptoms of ME and CFS, you can go to your doctor and hopefully um, be able to describe your symptoms and your doctor will say, hey, this sounds like ME. Why don't we get this blood test done? And they have results in a couple weeks and that'll save a lot of heartache for a lot of people uh, with ME. I think a big part of the struggle is, is getting diagnosed right now. It's an exclusionary diagnosis method. So I think if uh, when there's a, a blood test done, I think it will help uh, people with ME, it will help doctors that I'm sure are very frustrated hearing all these symptoms and it's very hard to kind of puzzle them together. I think doctors will be relieved to be able to help their patients. I think that uh, families will find some answers knowing why or confirming why you know, their loved one is unwell and, and, you know, and validating what they've been feeling for you know, X amount of months, years, or even decades. So here um, I have um, just some data that I wanted to share um, from Solve ME. And it just has some, some facts about ME. Um, and I, I thought it, was, it, it gives you a bit of an idea of what ME um, and CFS is like and the impact that it has. So it's estimated, and this is from 2022, so I'm sure the numbers have grown since then. Um, it's estimated that uh, 5 to 9 million adults and children have ME-CFS in the U.S. I suspect that number is much higher than, than listed. Um, the estimated cost of ME in the U.S. is between 149 to $362 billion in medical expenses and lost income combined. Uh, ME affects children and adults of all races, income levels, and geographic areas, um, although it affects women more. 
um, recovery rate is very rare. Um, recovery is estimated to be under 5%, um, leaving patients sick for years or even decades. Um, recovery is possible. I think it's very important to, to have keep your hope uh, and your faith in recovery, um, but it also it's important to understand that it is very rare. Um, so when you're, you know, when you get the snake oil salesman vibes from people telling you that these expensive su supplements will easily cure your illness, just beware and, and, and do research and understand that it is rare for, for full recovery. But it is possible. 25% um, uh, of people with ME are completely bed bound. Um, that's, that's a lot, that's an alarming uh, number. 75% uh, of patients are unable to work. So three quarters of the people that have ME uh, CFS can no longer work. Um, and 25% are completely bed bound. That's uh, astonishing data. Um, and, and I'm hoping that people who are trying to understand a little bit more about ME really understand that impact. Um, Last but not least here is low quality of life. For moderate to severe patients with ME, quality of life scores are consistently lower than any other major disease. So let that sink in for a minute. The quality of life is, is lower than most major diseases like ME, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, all these other autoimmune diseases, Crohn's, that people are going through. Uh, quality of life is, is, is significantly worse for people with severe ME, CFS. So these, these are hopefully things that um, get people thinking a little bit that, that may be prejudging someone with that potentially has ME and uh, you might think that they're lazy or they're, it's all in their head. Take a moment to look at some of the best medical uh, technology that's being currently offered, some of these tests and MRIs and blood work and... Um, there, there's a lot of data now. Um, I, I think we've gotten to the point where denying that it's a biological illness at this point is irresponsible, um, but understandable to a degree if you don't know the facts, right? So um, it's not too late, you know, to reach out to that family member and say, hey, you know, I, I saw this video or another video or any research you already did. And, and I, I might be changing my view on this. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, as humans, sometimes, you know, it's hard to, to believe and understand things until you really dive in a little bit and see it for yourself. Um, unfortunately, people with ME and CFS, you don't see them a lot, right? They're 25% they're are bed bound, 75% can't work. So you don't see them at work. You don't see them, you know, on your basketball team. And you, you just, you don't interact with them a lot. Um, hence, you know, the millions missing hashtag. They're, they're literally missing from action. So I urge anyone who uh, is watching this, maybe someone with Emmy sent you this video and you've gotten to the end of this kind of long-winded video. Um, I hope that this data helps you re-engage with, with this person and to please consider that, you know, this is not a psychological illness. Um, I've met a lot of people with Emmy and CFS at this point. Um, a lot of them are type A personalities. A lot of them were very successful in life, not just career-wise, but with being a parent and, and a sibling and just successful life. And they gave it up. They had to give it all up. And no one wants to. No one wants to do that. No one wants to give up their engineering career. They're trying to be a doctor, and they had to stop. And um, I've talked to a lot of people. Uh, recently, I was talking to a young woman who loved rock climbing. Uh, marathons, uh, was uh, kicking butt in college, and she's bed bound now. And these people are suffering tremendously, uh, mostly in silence. And now imagine someone suffering with a chronic illness. That's usually when you really want your friends and family, when you need them to rally around you the most. And that's not happening with ME and CFS. Um, and that's a big reason why I make these videos. Um, I think that any other illness, most, of, not all, of other illnesses, when someone gets sick with something, their family rallies around them, uh, uplifts them a bit until they get back on track. And 
that's what's needed with anyone that's dealing with illness or a hard time. And I just urge you to have a little empathy with anyone going through this. And I hope that um, you were able to learn even a little bit about some of the research currently being done with ME and CFS and the, the evidence that it's a, a, you know, a real biological chronic illness. Um, so uh, I hope that this uh, helps at all, uh, even if it helps one person, you know, or one family member change their mind or at least view things a little bit differently or reopen a, a, a conversation with someone you haven't spoken to in a long time. Um, but uh, until next time, uh, take care.